Hi folks, so a category of software vulnerability is race conditions. So essentially if you've ever got two lines of code that relies on something not changing in between those two lines of code happening um, for security purposes, then what you have is a race condition. It can be quite hard to not be dependent on that sequence of things that are happening outside of the code that we're writing but it's a really common mistake to make those kinds of assumptions. So if we're assuming that certain concurrent events are gonna happen in a specific order, then it can lead to concurrency bugs. So there's kind of two um, ways of thinking about it or two kinds of examples of this. One is that within our own software, we've got lots of threads happening. And so um, if, you know, if you're not familiar, a thread is like a process um, but it, a single process can have multiple threads, so it's kind of like threads of execution. So you've got one program running and it's got multiple threads that are being executed at the same time. Um, and if you're not really careful about how they access variables or access resources on the disk, for example, then that can cause concurrency bugs. Um, likewise, if you have on an operating system, you've got some code that's running and it might just be a single thread, but it's doing something. And there's other things that are also happening on the computer at the same time. If you make assumptions about the timing of the thing, other things happening on the computer while this program's running, that can also lead to race conditions and concurrency bugs, essentially. So it can lead to non-determinism. So, so basically what we want, we want things to be deterministic, usually when we're talking about things happening on a computer. We kind of want it to be predictable this happens and then this happens and it always results in this but if there are things happening in between what we're trying to do so our, our, you know our code does this and then it does this and then it does this but sometimes and the, in the meantime while we're doing that someone else on the computer deletes a file or accesses a file or changes the contents of a file between our actions of our software then that can lead to um, to race conditions so we might um, you know actors so the, the attacker might be able to actually control some of the concurrent actors, um, whether that's just processes happening or threads within a program, and exploit the timing to, to violate security objectives. And, and if they can do that, then that is a race condition vulnerability. So the, one of the most common kinds of race condition vulnerability is a time, to, time of check to time of use or a top two vulnerability. Um, and that can um, basically, it happens when something changes between when we check a condition and then we have our resulting action. So for example, if a program checks that a file exists or someone has permission to it, and then as a separate instruction, the computer then does something, um, an attacker could be really careful or carefully timed or maybe just spam the system trying to access a thing so that in between those two instructions executing, the attackers are able to do something that can completely violate um, the way that we intend our software to work and the security decision logic and everything to work. So here's an example. So in this example, we have our um, temporary file. Um, and in this example, it works best if, it, if it's predictable. So if the attacker is able to predict um, what this file name is, so we've got a temp file in the temp directory called not so random, and um, we've got a command variable, um, we've got a stat structure, which uh, uh, a structure is like a, um, well in C programming a structure is a variable that holds basically multiple data types in one like loop area of memory and basically we do a stat on the file name um, and stat is a function um, that gives you information about a file. Um, in this case we've got a busy program, there's lots of stuff happening in this code. Uh, you didn't actually have to sleep but this is just exaggerating it. Something else happening in our program um, but then we check whether or not it was okay. Um, so you know does the file um, exist and if it doesn't exist um, 
So if a file already exists, then then we'll um, just print an error message. Say, um, you know, sorry, something's gone wrong. If the file doesn't exist, then we're going to create it. Uh, and in this case, we're just sending a bash command that says hello, and it stores it in the file. Um, now, the vulnerability here is that while the program's sleeping, or um, even if we didn't have that command, just in the time, this fraction that it takes between us checking and then doing, if they go and create the file, then our um, content gets put into that file that someone else now owns and has the ability to set the permissions for, for example. So there's a classic example of a top two time of check to time of use security vulnerability, which is a race condition. So, you know, what if the file is there and it was a symlink? So a symlink is a file that just points to another file um, and operations on symlinks are typically carried out on the target. Um, and, you know, as, as you will probably be aware, hard link is when you've got two names that share the same inode and therefore they're referring to the exact same file. Um, and if you want to read a bit more about that stuff, you can type in man ln, which will give you the man page for the link command. Um, and so we've got a file um, that we want to make the program write to. Um, and so this is an attack against that code that we just saw. We can basically, um, when the race condition program is running, um, we just have to kind of time our attack so that while that is in between its instructions, so while it's doing its sleep five command, so we just kind of like start the program, wait, wait a second, and then we create a link to my special file from the not so random location, and then um, it's already checked whether that file exists, it's decided it didn't exist, it then writes the file uh, and it writes it into my file. Um, could even, wouldn't even need to create a link, we could just actually create a file and it will, as long as the, as long as that user has access, has the permission to write to the file, um, then it would work as a way of um, basically getting them to put the content into our file rather than a file, a temporary file that it owns and can set permissions on. So, yeah, bad news. So the way that we can reduce these kinds of errors is to use exception handling. Um, so rather than doing a check and then as a separate instruction we take the action, we need to um, be able to perform the conditional check and the operation as one atomic action. So for example, just use an open function call with a flag to the call to say to return an error if the file exists. Because then the operating system um, kernel provides a way for um, that all to happen as one action uh, so that nothing can happen in between. So another kind of race condition which I um, alluded to at the start is where we've actually got multiple threads of the same program that are trying to um, like access and, and modify the same memory, so like for a variable for example, and it might be through aliases. So for example we've got a piece of software and it has say uh, five threads that are running and they're all um, interested in one variable that's set for that program. If they um, start accessing that variable and maybe you do something that tells it to basically delete that variable then these other, other um, threads might still try and read to or write to that um, freed memory, which would obviously be a problem. Uh, at, at best, it'll crash the program. At worst, there'll be some vulnerability that allows an attacker to inject um, something else into that memory, um, which changes the behavior of the code um, of what these you know other threads are doing. Um, and there can so there can be all kinds of problems with the timing of that. Uh, so it can lead to consist inconsistencies or use after free vulnerabilities. There are loads of um, synchronization features, uh, like mutexes, and all sorts of like ways of doing locking. And it's a whole area of computer science, um, so that you know there are plenty of people thinking about this stuff. But from a security perspective, there are you know you just have to make sure you're doing it properly, basically, to 
um, avoid security problems. So there's the idea of ownership um, over aliases. So if you do have a single bit of memory that's being accessed from multiple places, make one specific thread, for example, take ownership over it. So one way of doing that is to have like, uh, if you've got someone performing a write action, you might allow other people to read it. Uh, so, sorry, while the write action's happening, you might let no, no one do anything to it. While there's no write action taking, taking place, you might say, well, all the threads can read from it. Um, but as soon as someone says they want to write to it, no one else is allowed to start reading from it. Uh, so, you know, there are, there are um, all kinds of, um, like, techniques uh, that, that are used to avoid concurrency problems. It's a whole, you know, you know and avoiding deadlocks and the rest of it. There's a, there's a whole area of computer science that's all about that. But it's worth pointing out that race conditions can lead to security vulnerabilities. And the top two... Um, is the most common kind of race condition in terms of security um, because it's so easy to do. It's very common to do those kinds of checks in code. And um, you know, if you're looking at someone else's code and you can see they've checked something before they've accessed a file, if those are two separate lines of code, it's very possible there's a race condition there. Um, and it's very easy to, to make that mistake.